Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, this one called Is It Taunter. It's a blue-red control deck featuring the 5-mana 1-1 indestructible goblin from M21, and whenever Brash Taunter is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target opponent, so if the opponent tries to attack us on the ground, they will feel the repercussions from our Brash Taunter dealing them a bunch of damage, and then for 2 and a red we can also tap it, so it fights another target creature, so we still make sure that our Brash Taunter ends up in a fight, even if the opponent doesn't want to and they end up taking a bunch of damage based on the largest creature in play it can also be your own creature that we end up fighting I tried to include Brash Taunter in a few different decks, including a red-white one that played Caprador, since both benefit from being dealt damage, so there's a bit of overlapping synergy there, but I eventually settled on a blue-red control deck, just because it helps us stay alive long enough to see our Brash Taunter in action, and one of the other benefits of playing Brash Taunter in this control deck is that it synergizes quite well with our Beacon Bolt and Blitz of the Thunder Raptor, removal spells that typically can only target creatures, Beacon Bolt 1 in blue and red for a sorcery that deals damage to target creature equal to the total number of instant and sorcery cards we own in exile and in our graveyard, so it can be a pretty nice creature removal spell in a deck with so many cheap instants and sorceries, but in the late game if we have a Brash Taunter in play, we can simply Beacon Bolt our opponent directly by targeting our Brash Taunter and redirecting the damage to our opponent. So Beacon Bolt turns into a win condition as well, besides being a nice removal spell in the early game, and Beacon Bolt can close out the game pretty quickly with our Taunter, especially once you factor in that it also has a jump start, so we can replay it from the graveyard if we discard a card from our hand. And uh, damage on Beacon Bolt also just adds up quickly, since we have so many cheap instants and sorceries in the deck, especially once we get to the later stages of the game. And then we've got Blitz of the Thunder Raptor, which is very similar, one and a red for an instant that deals damage to a creature or planeswalker equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in our graveyard, and also exiles that card if it would end up in a graveyard instead, which is a nice bonus. So both of these make for nice finishers alongside Brash Taunter, but we can of course just use them as normal removal in the early game if we just need to stay alive. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at one mana we've got some cheap instants to enable our Blitz and Beacon Bolt with Opt to scry one and draw a card, and Shock to deal two damage to any target at instant speed. Then we've got a Frantic Inventory as well at two mana, an instant that draws a card and then draws a card equal to the number of cards named Frantic Inventory in our graveyard. And since we are a more controlling deck aiming to get to the late game, we can expect to draw multiple copies of Frantic Inventory, providing a nice bit of card advantage while fueling our Blitz and Beacon Bolt. Then we've got our four copies of Blitz, four copies of Thrill of Possibility, a two mana instant, and as an additional cost we have to discard a card to draw two. So in the early game we don't mind discarding a Frantic Inventory, since the first copy doesn't really do anything special. And then we can also discard additional lands in the late game if we don't need them, or if we draw multiple Brash Taunters in the early game we can maybe get rid of one of them. And then at 3 mana we've got our Beacon Bolt, and at 4 mana we've got the full playset of Storm's Wrath as our sweeper of choice, dealing 4 damage to each creature and each Planeswalker, so this also works nicely with our Brash Taunter, as we'll be able to deal 4 damage to the opponent for each copy of Brash Taunter in play. And then the final piece of the puzzle is Crackling Drake. It's a flyer with 4 toughness and its power is equal to the total number of instant and sorcery cards we own in exile and in our graveyard. The exile part is relevant if we jumpstart Beacon Bolt, which will then end up in the exile zone. And then when the Crackling Drake enters the battlefield we also get to draw a card, so this can be an additional finisher, and it also synergizes well with our Brash Taunter, since Crackling Drake usually has quite a bit of power to it, so if the opponent doesn't have any creature for us to fight, we can simply fight our own Crackling Drake with our Taunter, it will only take one damage, which is no big deal, but will end up dealing damage equal to the Crackling Drake's power to the opponent essentially, doubling our clock potentially. And then of course our four copies of Brash Taunter, the mana base, we've got four copies of Temple of Epiphany to scry one, four steam vents, nine mountains, five islands, and two castle ventress to potentially scry and help us assemble the different combo pieces in the late game. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. You can always discard one shock to the thrill if it's not particularly great in the matchup. Bottom another taunter. Grim initiate, so opponent probably on a cavalcade red deck, so shock should be useful. 
Now I would like to use Blitz on the Initiate so they don't get the token since it exiles it. So I'll probably still play a Thrill here. And then maybe next turn we can Blitz the Initiates. Spitter. And a Bannerets. So what do I discard? Maybe I do have to discard a Taunter since I'm gonna need all the interaction I can get my hands on. Although if I draw Storm's Wrath, then I might not need Double Shock and Blitz to clean things up. So I'll discard one Shock here. Alright, drew another Taunter. So this turn I'm probably gonna Shock plus Blitz. I could consider doing it now in case I have Infuriate. But maybe we change their play by waiting. Like if they play Cavalcade now and we kill two of their creatures, the Cavalcade doesn't look too impressive. I'm gonna pump the Banneret instead. Alright, I guess we'll shock that. That works. And then probably still gonna Blitz the Initiates. Even an Infuriate can't save it now. And a light up the stage. Sadly can't play the Drake quite yet. Beacon Bolts. I think I gotta draw towards Lance here. Since we ended up drawing the Drake, it would have been better to just Blitz the Spitter last turn. Since we ended up taking two damage from it instead of just one. I will just Blitz it now though. This opponent doesn't have any creatures. They're just gonna shock our face. The fact that Blitz Exile is also very relevant against cards like Annex. This is a stomp plus shock situation. It sure is. Alright, so the Brash Taunter will do a good job of holding off the Bone Crusher. Can't think of many ways that a mono red deck has to deal with Brash Taunter unless they're main decking the uh, Soul Seer from M21 that removes Indestructible, which I highly doubt. Suppose they could have an Ember Cleave to trample over, which does mitigate how much damage the Taunter deals. So that's potentially a scary card. And yeah, there we see it. But we've got a Storm's Wrath at the ready. Ooh, opponent's attacking. I don't think they know how Brash Tantra works, if that's the case. Lots of reading going on. Brash Tantra does have a lot of text, to be fair. I hope they just play the Bone Crusher. Nope, we're still attacking. It is unintuitive for a red player not to attack, to be honest. I don't think I'm gonna edit this part out, it's too funny. Alright, opponent does not attack. Yeah, that still doesn't work. <laughs> oh boy. I don't really want to get cleaved, so let's just Taunter and then Storm's Wrath. No! 
Amber Cleave is gone. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. Managed to beat Monorant on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hands. Always happy to discard the first inventory to a thrill. Steam vents I'll keep since we need double blue for Drake. Facing a turn one healer's hawk. So could be blue white flyers, could be white weenie. Blue white flyers confirmed, so gotta find those removal spells and the storm's wrath as soon as possible. Although crackling drake's pretty decent too. All right, all the inventories. Don't hate to see it. So I probably want to. I guess inventory and opt see the same amount of cards if we're looking for shock specifically. So let's do it now. Right, there's a Storm's Wrath. That's good to know. Because if our opponent has a Spectral Sailor or a Rally of Wings, they could save the Sovereign if we let them untap, if we plan on shocking it instead. But now we can just set up a Storm's Wrath. Staggering insights. Okay, so they might have a slightly different build with maybe ways of protecting their creatures, like Armatra's Blessing or God's Willing, in which case the Storm's Wrath is not going to be as effective as we would like it to be. Could also just play Crackling Drake first, but I'm happy enough wiping the board. And then we've got a lot of card advantage coming up here with the inventories and the Crackling Drake. And Pure and Eagle. I'll keep up Shock. Blitz, another great one. Yeah, this seems like a pretty rough matchup for the blue white flyers deck. Play Drake. Opponent's probably keeping up a rally of wings, but Blitz would still kill the eagle even if they give it plus two plus two. I could start getting aggressive, just kill the eagle attack with the crackling Drake, but I'm happy playing a long game here. So I'm not in a hurry. Healer's Hawk. So once we kill the Empyrean Eagle, Taunter can also start killing all these one toughness creatures. Ooh, a Sephara. All right. Sephara is potentially a problem, but we can just kill that instead. Sure. So... Let's see here. I could Storm's Wrath plus Blitz, which would kill basically everything, including my drakes. I could play a Brush Taunter first, but then I might be taking quite a bit of damage, which seems like a, a risky proposition. So I guess I don't hate attack with the two drakes, see how they block. And then I can blitz before damage to grow the drakes. And Wrath should kill everything. And I'll keep a Beacon Bolt, great finisher here with the Brash Taunter.
Yeah, I'm guessing their last card is Rally. Play Taunter. And Beacon Bolt would be 8 damage to their face, which is not quite enough. So I'll just keep up Shock, I guess. And then next turn we can uh, close out the game. Worst case scenario, I guess, is like double rally. If I shock in response to the rally, they rally again. But it's still only 10 damage. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. Sadly, don't get to see our beacon ball to close out the game. But yeah, Blue-White Flyer seems like a great matchup for us. We've got a ton of removal, sweepers with Storm's Wrath, and even a flying blocker with Crackling Drake. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine opening hands, especially against a more aggressive creature deck. Turn 1 Terramander. I'll take the one. Good, anything better for me? An inventory. Alright. So they might be on an Is it Drake's type deck. So it's going to be very similar, but a little bit more aggressively slanted. This turn, I'll just play Temple. And a Brash Taunter. It's okay. Yeah, I guess I'll keep it. I might want to try and dig for some card advantage, like our own frantic inventories. But the first copy wouldn't do much anyway. I could just thrill discarding the beacon bolt and we can always jumpstart it later. Don't know if my opponent's playing counter spells, which would make casting thrill pretty bad. But I also want to resolve the Crackling Drake. Alright, that works. And double shock to take it out. So, essentially a 3 for 1. Let's play the Taunter first. And we've got Beacon Bolts aplenty. Crackling Drake gives us something to fight with Brash Taunter. Thrill probably discards one Storm's Wrath. Alright, inventory draws two. And a Sprite Dragon. And Beacon Bolt to grow its out of range from Brash Taunter. Sure. So I can't quite kill my opponent, can I? I can cast two beacon bolts, one for five, one for six. But we're getting close. So I could just Storm's Wrath this turn. And cast my first Beacon Bolt. Oh, 
And the next one will be lethal. Third inventory. Can they find an answer? If they have like a brazen borrower, they could bounce taunter in response to the beacon bolts, in which case we'll have to maybe play it a bit differently. Opponent still digging. All right, I think they're dead. Beacon bolts for the win. Sweet. On to the next one. We're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Facing a teamer deck. Do need to keep islands. Well, this looks like a growth spiral and therefore this looks like teamer reclamation, which is probably gonna beat us pretty handily. Um, yeah, let's just team van stabbed. I will say that Brash Tundra is pretty good against Uro, since if they want to attack with it, it will cost them a lot of life. And Blitz can also exile it, so they can't escape it again. But the whole Wilderness Reclamation plus Expansion Explosion is pretty difficult for us to interact with. And there we see Uro. Crackling Drake's not bad. Well, if we can dodge the actual Wilderness Reclamation... At least we won't die right away. Drake gets disputed. And Shark Typhoon for two. So Uro can almost be escaped. then gets countered. So we will see an escaped Uro. Haven't been able to cast many instances and sorceries yet, so the Beacon Bolt and Blitz aren't too impressive at the moment. Hopefully our second Taunter resolves. Although Brazen Borrower could send it back to her hands. Alright, we successfully prevented Uro from attacking. That's a win in my book. I'll keep the Shock in hand, because if we find a Storm's Wrath, we could maybe Wrath plus Shock to deal with Uro. Alright, so I could Thrill Discarding Inventory to start. This might just be a big expansion explosion to draw a bunch of cards. So I can Exile Uro if I want to. Also then I don't get to fight it here. I think I just pass. Do we see a big explosion? We do. So the problem if I let them untap is that they could 
draw into a Brazen Borrower, which messes up my Taunter play. If the goal is to exile Uro, then I can just Shock plus Blitz. If I had one more instant or sorcery in the graveyard, then I could Fight plus Blitz. But I don't, so one damage short. I guess I could just Thrill discarding the Shock and then Blitz for 6 damage, exiling it. I guess that's reasonable too. But we're probably just dead to a reclamation as soon as they find one. Or another explosion. Mm, there it is. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Hand seems okay, we can discard one Wrath to the Thrill. And then our hand looks quite a bit better. Turn on Pelt Collector. I could shock that, but I'm probably just gonna Wrath to catch us back up. Although we'll see. Green-White, so this is a Conclave Mentor deck. In which case, I probably just want to kill the Mentor in response to the Pelt Collector trigger. So it only picks up one counter. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Not sure yet what to discard with Thrill. Turn one Swamp into a Serrated Scorpion. So if we can exile this with Blitz, we won't have to take the two additional damage. We drew Inventory, which is a perfect card to discard to an early Thrill. And that'll power up our Blitz. Serpent on a mono black Archfiend Vessel deck. It's another card that is pretty nice to exile with a Blitz, so that they can turn it into a 5 5 demon with a Call of the Death Dweller. We drew another Blitz. Now, opponent could have a Village Rite to sack their creature in response, which would make the Blitz a lot less effective. So I'm gonna try and wait for them to tap out, I think. Otherwise, I'll take two. Rotting Regisaur. Hmm. It's pretty large. Brash is pretty good against it. So next turn, if I were to double Blitz, it's still not enough. It would be two and three, so five damage total. So I probably Blitz Scorpion now. And then just play Drake to chump Regisaur and then Tantra can hold it off. Storm's Wrath, not bad. Could also take 7 damage, of course. I'm not dead yet. Discards a Myers Grasp, actually a perfect answer to the Brash Taunter, so I'm happy that's discarded here. Hopefully they don't have more of them in the deck. Demonic Embrace, a 10-powered Flying Regisaur. Uh-oh. Yeah, let's uh, jump block it. So now the plan of Taunter doesn't look amazing. Shock plus Blitz is uh, still one damage short. But we'll see here. Opts, that'll do it. So 
So I'll wait for them to discard to the Regisaur, and then we can Shock plus Blitz to kill it. Now they do still have that Embrace in the graveyard that didn't get exiled. So we'll have to deal with all their creatures and they've got a castle to refuel. Opponent deciding where to put the Embrace. Alright, so Storm's Wrath looks good here. I could draw first with the inventory. If we draw land we still get to Wrath. I don't think I need to take that risk. We're comfortably ahead if we just deal with our creatures here. And then next turn we can draw some cards or play the Taunter. Our opponent activates Castle at a cost of 2 life. And a Deadweight, oh no. So they've got both Grasp and Deadweight, which yeah, are pretty good answers to Brash Taunter as it turns out. Well, let's inventory. Gotta find some more win conditions. Bottom the Storm's Wrath. Beacon Bolt is probably worth keeping. And then Thrill discarding a Mountain. Can draw into it. Alright, they had a Paragon. Which can be suited up with the Embrace next turn. Embrace does make Brash Taunter a lot less effective than I would like it to be, since all their creatures can just fly over. Can maybe draw into a shock here. Another inventory. <laughs> Looks good. Beacon Bolt in the meantime up to 10. So that's going to be exciting. I'll save the Beacon Bolts for when we find a Taunter. Crackling Drake can also just close out a game in one or two attacks. Murder Strider. And that should pretty much wrap things up. Alright, sweet. Managed to beat Mono Black Aggro, even through the dead weights and the grasps. So our Is It Taunter deck performed quite well. We lost to Team Reclamation, which is one of the tier 1 decks in standard, so that's not too surprising. But then we managed to beat up on a lot of aggressive creature decks, which is pretty common for best of one. Typically see more aggressive decks than control decks. So in a best of one meta with a lot of aggressive decks, then having a nice blue-red control deck with Brash Taunter as one of its finishers is not a bad place to be. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.